It's a very good idea to get as much of the air out of your tubing as possible before you start your pump for the first time. This eliminates the risk of having your pump run dry. That's when it gets to an air pocket in the tubing. So what we're going to do is you can see here that the top of the tubing in many cases is not full of fluid yet. Anywhere above the T-line has not had the air escape. So what we're going to do is we're going to tip the case backwards in order to allow the air to escape. And that'll cause water to flow from the T-line down into the block and the radiator. There we go. So we can bring the case back down to a normal position and you can see now that the CPU water block is full of liquid. Huh, you can't actually see that very well. That's okay, it is. I can see it. So once the T-line, once you've bled most of the air bubbles out of the system, then you can go ahead and cap the T-line. The included tubing plug uses a Danger Den one half inch perfect seal barb. You can see the difference in thickness between the tubing and the barb. It is, I would go as far as to say it is impossible for water to leak out around this seal. So that's why we use the tubing plug at the top of the T-line. thing we didn't mention earlier is uh, the installation of the fan power as well as the pump power. The pump plugs into a three pin connector whereas your fan can use either a three pin connector or a four pin Molex. Here we are connecting the fan to an available four pin Molex connector on the PC power supply. The DTEK DB1 pump uses a three pin connector which you can plug into an available header on your motherboard or use an adapter. So now that the system's all set up, uh, no water cooling system can start and run on the first try. It is necessary to cycle the pump a few times, so that means you're going to power it up and power it back down uh, once the water stops moving. What this allows the pump to do is dislodge the bubbles that are stuck in places like the radiator. So we're going to show you what it looks like when you power on the loop for the first time. So then once you see that the water is not moving quickly anymore, you turn it off and then you can see the bubbles escaping out the T-line here. So it's going to be necessary to power it on and off a few times. Um, it can be as many as 10 to 15 times depending on the configuration of your loop before it starts to flow freely on its own. During the starting and stopping process, which we've done about 7 or 8 times now, you can see that our T-line is now almost empty. Uh, that's because the air that was trapped in the radiator is now dispersed throughout the CPU block and then was able to bleed up the T-line. So that means what we're going to need to do is just pop the tubing plug off the T-line and put some more water in in order to make sure that we don't end up with an empty T. Once the T-line is filled back up, you can resume cycling the power until all the air is bled out. So now that the T-line's plugged, you can go ahead and just tuck it anywhere out of the way. You can put it above the power supply or above an optical drive, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the most important thing is that when air bubbles bleed out of the loop, out of the water cooling loop, they need to be able to float up the T-line so they can be replaced by water. Air bubbles will cause unnecessary noise and they will reduce the efficiency of your water cooling. Alright, so there you have it. The loop set up, that leads us to just a couple last things. Um, the first of all is leak prevention. You can use hose clamps, which basically just open up and then fit around a barb. You then clip it on, and that'll keep any tubing from coming off the hose. Um, you can also use zip ties wherever the area is too tight for hose clamps. So you just put the zip tie around the barb and tighten it up. So those are a couple inexpensive options for leak prevention. Um, there's also maintenance. The only maintenance you'll really need to do on a water cooling setup like this is to change the coolant once every 
one to five years depending on the concentration of hydrix you use and you'll also need to make sure that your tea line never runs out of water so just kind of peek in the case periodically and top it off. So here we have the completed system. The whole installation process takes about half an hour to an hour and a half depending on uh, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate user and it's totally worth it because we observed a load temperature difference versus the tunic tower of about 5 degrees on a Core 2 Duo E4300. I really hope you enjoyed this edition of NCIX Tech Tips. My name is Linus Sebastian. Thanks for watching.